Good evening and welcome to Left, Right and Centre this Friday evening. I'm Ankita Mukherjee. Outrage after Samajwadi Party's Maharashtra chief Abu Azmi says women having sex outside marriage should be hanged. His comments coming just a day after Mulayam Singh Yadav said rape cases uh, should why should rape cases lead to hanging? Boys are boys. Mistakes will be made. We ask tonight, is it time to reject politicians who make such shocking and indefensible comments? Also on the show tonight, beyond questioning the patriarchal language and mindsets of our politicians, is it also time to hold our political parties accountable on the promises they make on women's issues in their manifestos? Our parties, in fact, just paying lip service to gender equality. But first, in some breaking news just coming in, in its strongest intervention yet, the Election Commission has banned public meetings and rallies addressed by BJP leaders Amit Shah and Samajwadi Party Minister Azam Khan. In a letter to the UP government, it has also ordered that first information reports be registered against the leaders for making highly inflammatory speeches while campaigning for general elections in the state. Vedya, uh, NDTV's Arunachalam Vedanathan joining us at this point uh, for more. Um, Vedanathan, what are the details that you're getting at this point of this intervention by the poll panel? Uh, is this uh, pretty much unprecedented? Order right now. All right, uh, uh, if I, Vedanathan, if you can uh, hear me, uh, the details that we are getting at this point is that the Election Commission is also uh, asking the Uttar Pradesh government to now file FIRs against these leaders based on uh, the reports received. Um, what are the details that you are getting? In fact, Ankita, it is an unprecedented order by the Election Commission. I have been covering Election Commission for a long time, never seen this order. It has invoked uh, Article 324 of the Constitution and saying that under these powers, we, uh, it has written to the UP Chief Secretary saying that no permission should be granted to conduct rallies, roadshows, particularly campaigning of these two leaders, Azam Khan as well as Amit Shah has been completely banned. The letter also says that we have sent notices to, the, uh, to Azam Khan as well as Mr. Amit Shah, but despite this, the peace in UP is being disturbed. And it says that as far as Azam Khan is concerned, Despite notices being sent by the Election Commission for violation of model code, UP government is completely soft peddling. That's why it has said no permission should be granted and completely banning uh, the campaign by these two leaders. And not only that, it says it immediately it should be implemented and he wanted an order from the complaints order by the Chief Secretary to be sent to the Election Commission also. Now, uh, Vedinathan, you're saying that this is absolutely unprecedented in all the years that you have covered uh, elections. These are not uh, two ordinary leaders we're talking about. We're talking about the chief strategist of the BJP, the party in charge for Uttar Pradesh, um, uh, coming in the light of the comments he's made. Azam Khan, a senior minister, making some very controversial comments as well, including uh, perhaps most recently that remark about how the Kargil war was won for India by Muslims. Uh, Amit Shah also making comments about how elections should be used to avenge the the insult of the riots um, and, and other objectionable comments as well. But uh, going forward, what sort of precedent is this going to set? Exactly. It's very tough. I, I am doubting even these two leaders even may approach the court saying that the freedom of expression has been curtailed by the election commission. But that's another uh, I mean, test will have to be taken by the courts also. I doubt both the parties will be approaching the court also saying this. But yes, election commission duty is to conduct election in a free and fair manner. That is a mandate of the constitution. But the election commission letter to the UP secretary, chief secretary clearly says that the peace is in UP is completely disturbed. Despite our election commission notices to Amit Shah as well as Azam Khan, nothing is going in the right direction. Uh, uh, and all, all speeches, particularly on the communal lines have been made, but UP government is keeping quiet. And as for Amit Shah is concerned, I think FIR has already been filed, but Azam Khan, there is no FIR. EC letter clearly says that despite our uh, observations and notice to Azam Khan, UP government hasn't done anything at all. So we have left with nothing but to ban rallies, public meetings and roadshows of these two leaders. All right, Vedanathan, stay with us. My colleague Anand Zanane joining us at this point from Lucknow as well on the phone line. A very strong comments there from the poll panel, Anand, uh, directed at the Uttar Pradesh government. They have 
in effect been accused of soft peddling on their own minister Azam Khan even though of an FIR has been registered against Amit Shah's comments uh, the EC going on to say no permission whatsoever for any public meetings public processions rallies road shows etc by these two leaders not only that it's asking for FIRs to be filed immediately for criminal proceedings to be initiated uh, immediately um, any reaction yet from the Samajwadi party government well, so far, uh, no official reaction from the Samajwadi Party government on uh, this uh, very strong order by the Election Commission to actually ban rallies of Azam Khan uh, in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, as Vaidya was pointing out, that there was little action against uh, Azam Khan. Uh, no FR has been registered for his uh, speeches that he has been making against uh, Narendra Modi, against Amit Shah, and also uh, that uh, infamous Kargil speech where he tried to communalize the martyrs of uh, the Kargil war. Now, uh, th that is something that, uh, you know, the uh, Election Commission will now perhaps have to look into as to how the decision can be perhaps galvanized in this sense because clearly there is, uh, you know, uh, you know the, this thing that weigh, that's weighing on the mind of the administration that Azam Khan is a senior cabinet minister from Uttar Pradesh, something that has been very clearly spelled out by the Election Commission in its order as well, that uh, there is a certain sense of apprehension on the part of the local administration to go ahead and lodge FIRs. FIRs were swiftly lodged in the cases against Amit Shah, both in Bijnor and in Shamli, but no such FIR has yet been lodged against uh, Azam Khan uh, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ghaziabad for uh, his remarks, uh, that alleged hate speech that he had made there. So clearly, uh, you know, there was a soft peddling, as you pointed out, and, uh, you know, there was no end to this hate speech making, so to speak, that, uh, you know, had been happening from either side. Amit Shah has been lying low ever since the FIRs have been filed against him. And also he moved the Allahabad High Court first seeking a stay on his arrest. He, had, uh, he was apprehensive about the fact that there might be an arrest warrant issued against him for those two speeches he made in Shamli and in Bijnor. And later on went, again, uh, went ahead and withdrew that case only yesterday. Now in the light of these developments, whether Amit Shah will once again seek a stay of arrest, that is something that remains to be seen because this is a very strong order by the Election Commission saying that uh, in cases where FIRs have not been lodged, uh, those must be lodged and whatever appropriate criminal proceedings need to be initiated against both these leaders must be initiated. So now perhaps there is now a far greater threat of uh, being arrested or uh, being acted upon by the local administration and by the local police. And it remains to be seen how the state government now in a sense will uh, defend uh, uh, you know, its leader uh, um, Azam Khan and uh, what the BJP will say in Amit Shah's defense because clearly uh, you know, the election commission right. does not want him to campaign and canvass across the state. Anand, Anand, where is Amit Shah at the moment? Is he in the state of Uttar Pradesh? Well, uh, no word about uh, Mr. Amit Shah's whereabouts, uh, whether he's in Uttar Pradesh or whether he's in Gujarat or elsewhere across the country. As I've been saying that he has been lying low. The only public appearance that he has made so far after being booked for making those alleged hate speeches was in Varanasi. And that was also a very brief, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of public engagement that he took uh, part in. There was no rally, there was no road show, not even a meeting with party workers. He just landed up in Varanasi to look at uh, uh, the preparedness and take stock of the preparedness for Mr. Narendra Modi's uh, campaign there. So essentially now also it remains to be seen after this order, who will take uh, control of Modi's campaign in Uttar Pradesh because clearly Mr. Amit Shah, who perhaps Mr. Modi had been counting on for actually ensuring that uh, he not only covers Varanasi but uh, the entire state for the BJP. He is the BJP is in charge of Uttar Pradesh. Uh, now that also will perhaps uh, you know take a hit. Uh, this is in a sense a significant setback for uh, the BJP also as far as its campaign across Uttar Pradesh is concerned. Uh, now that the okay, okay, Anand, Anand, I'm going to interrupt you there for a moment because we're also now being joined by uh, Gaurav Bhatia of the Samajwadi Party. Uh, this breaking news that we are now getting on NDTV 24/7, the Election Commission banning all public roadshows, rallies, all public appearances now by your Minister Azam Khan. Also accusing your government, the, the Akhilesh Yadav government in Uttar Pradesh of soft peddling on the minister, Gaurav Bhatta. How do you respond to these very strong comments and observations from the poll panel? Ankita, first of all, I think uh, the order that has been passed by the EC needs to be studied. And whatever order has been passed by the EC, 
after studying the content of those orders those would have to be implemented until unless it is stayed by a competent court now uh, when the elections are on the superintendence and control of the entire official machinery is that of the ec the ec is empowered to take appropriate actions so to say that the government has been soft peddling would not be correct because the entire administration the dmssp are all under the superintendence of the ec after we have examined the order i think only then it would be appropriate to discuss the merits and demerits of the order at this juncture only through news channels we know that they have passed a very uh, strict order uh, pertaining to both the leaders you're saying that uh, you feel that your government has not in any way soft pedaled on azam khan given his seniority given the fact that he is a minister in the government whereas uh, amit shah uh, who's been um, in a, in a sense in a similar situation uh, guilty of hate uh, of making comments that could be construed as hate speech uh, there has been a very swift fir filed against him wouldn't would would you not say that this uh, reflects a certain double standard on the part of the up government First of all, let's not compare the two statements. The statement made by Mr. Amit Shah talking about taking revenge is clearly a statement which falls within the purview of uh, inciting communal feelings and inciting hatred amongst communities. What Mr. Azam Khan has said is completely different. People may say that you know he is trying to divide the two communities, but whether it is. spreading communal hatred and citing communal feelings is another discussion secondly as i said earlier the registration of fir and the control of district administration is with the election commission of india since the time the elections have been notified they have the powers and they are competent enough to give directions to even the district administration so the role of the state government should not be questioned and it should not be right, said role, that the you're state saying the role of the state government should not be questioned the election that commission that would be actually incorrect okay the election commission has done precisely that uh, in these preceding minutes i'm just going to uh, bring in reactions from our other political Article guests for 24 ankita okay yeah just a moment uh, i'd Talks like to also about superintendence and control of election commission while yes. the elections are on All right, all right. Superintendent, certainly. I want to bring in uh, Shobha Oja of the Congress and Shahzad Ilmi of the Aam Aadmi Party, who are also here uh, uh, with us uh, tonight. Uh, Shobha Oja, um, how do you see these developments? Uh, the Congress has been talking at great length about the kind of polarization that's happened uh, in the run-up to uh, elections, both in the polarized Western Uttar Pradesh, but indeed in this campaign trail for 2014 already. Yeah, it is uh, a fight of the ideologies, one communal and the other. uh communal versus uh, people who want to see this india united now as far as communal ideology is concerned we have two major people who have been trying to polarize communalize the entire election one mr amit shah the other mr az and we congratulate the election commission for taking for banning them from having any rallies in up and uh, i suppose it's not only up other parts of the country too because such people who try to flare up religious sentiments and try to divide our country on the lines of caste creed just to garner some uh, votes should be banned and should be put behind bars i would say because these these two are the personalities who were uh, who right. one can clearly say are yes. responsible for muzaffarnagar riots yes angita i would like to say uh, both are two sides of the same coin and the support and the support each other's politics Amit Shah and Azam Khan support each other's politics. This is uh, communal politics that gets them votes, and this is exactly what they have um, in the arsenal. Nothing more to offer. And I'm glad this gag order has come. It's a welcome and a necessary intervention. Azam Khan was there. I'm, I'm afraid it's come a bit tad too late because Azam Khan was there three days back in Ghaziabad, and believe you me, he communalized the entire atmosphere. we have to thank him for getting more votes to bjp so they actually support each other you know some so it's like a dukandari of 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 a kind that you sell some votes i buy some votes gorav bhatia gorav bhatia respond to that yeah first of all uh, to the congress i would only say that the media is free to ask questions to the samajwadi party and to the other parties 
but at least the Congress, when Mr. Imran Masood himself has given the most poisonous line of the entire election, don't you know After Mr. That, Mr. Masood Bini spoke Masad when Rahman he was a part of been, you? You know, he, he using spoke those words language. When I think he was a part of your, your, to your party. The Samajwadi but party. He was a part of Samajwadi party when he spoke those words. And he as was, far as our party is concerned, party. Mr. Rahul Gandhi made it very clear so we do not endorse such language. Mr. Gandhi has made it very ticket. clear that we do not endorse the language what Mr. Party. Masood has said. I think uh, if, if, we throw, if we threw him out, why is it that the Congress welcomed him and rewarded him with a Lok Sabha See, ticket? It was his if ideology when he was a part of you. It was, you, it you was his ideology when he was a part of the Samajwadi party. But so there was a change of mind. He hasn't used that language it. after he's joined because the Congress. That clearly statement. shows that he, he ha he's a changed person now. He, he doesn't follow the same ideology as the Mahatma Gandhi party. Shah Jalmi, do you believe that uh, this is something that pol his, politicians his across party lines have been guilty of, particularly in the state of Uttar Pradesh? Absolutely. There's always polarization on lines of caste and religion. You know, they are rise just before the elections. It's used as the same old trick that's used. And all these leaders continue to be as corrupt um, as ever. And it's like a smoke screen, secularism and communalism. The ideology is, is pretty much to fool the people and use the, their, their communal uh, caste card to win elections. And, I'm, 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 and I think this is responsible no, for the backwardness of UP. The party not doing the same. I no, nobody is. No, they are doing the same. They are also <laughs> spreading hatred. Look at the speeches really? and the words of your leaders. And hatred? Look, uh, yes, not hatred. Accountability of the accountability of the elected politics. representatives. Where money goes. They have been Nothing on communal leaders. and caste lines. So how can it's you creating preach? a new Shadia. civic identity of an Indian? Not to not to use the religion and caste factor time and time again. Really? You've got when to do Mr. more than Mr. that to win votes. You've got to do more than that to win votes. Clerics. And when he is meeting religious leaders, he is he religious? not communalizing the election? And I also feel Mulayam Singh Yadav should also have gotten a yes. gag order for he, the statement. Yes, I think Asam Khan has got a gag order. I think, right. order. I I think Mulayam Singh Yadav should also gag order for his very sexist speech. I think this is not enough. All right, and Shazia, I'm glad you bring that up because uh, I would now um, like to I, I would now like to shift our focus. God of, he should also be banned. God of, you get a chance. God of, you get a chance to respond to all of that. All right. You'll get a chance to respond to all of that because that is the main crux of our discussion tonight. We had to uh, reflect upon this breaking news story coming in. So thank you for responding on that.